We finally did it. We've been talking about it for so long, debating, considering, researching. I mean, it's a big purchase. But we finally moved ahead, and we got ourselves a Tesla. We are the proud new owners of a Model Y. And we couldn't be happier. All of the concerns we had quickly disappeared. It's a fun, fast car to drive. Autopilot is crazy. Honestly, if you've never driven a Tesla, you should give it a try just to experience this. And it's still fun every time we pull in a gas station just to grab some snacks. No more gas, that's awesome. But me being me and knowing that it was a possibility was all I needed to go ahead and start adding our car to our smart home automation setup. Today, I'm going to share how I added it to Home Assistant, what you can do with it, and I'll walk you through while I create a new custom dashboard card in Home Assistant for our new Tesla, along with some automations that will help keep it charged. I'm going to add chapters to this video, so even if you're not interested in Tesla, you might enjoy seeing how I create the custom dashboard card. I use an easy method that allows you to position elements of a card perfectly, and you can reuse the cards in any dashboard. I'll show you my YAML code, so you should be able to pause and copy elements into your own designs. And for those that help support my channel, I'll make all my YAML files, images, or anything else I use available to the channel members. But as always, if you have questions or comments, I'll do my best to respond to absolutely everyone who posts. And I'm sure you all know this, but if you like this video, click the thumbs up. You don't believe how much that little step that you do helps out my channel with the YouTube bots. And I do thank you in advance. All right, let's get this going. If you're going to try this at home, know that I use hacks to install most of my custom integrations. I'll add these to the description as well, but for this video, you should know that I have already installed the following. Button card. This provides the magic for how I make my Home Assistant dashboard cards. Card mod. This allows us to use CSS to style our smart home automation dashboards. Mushroom cards. You don't need this one, but it makes some of the styling easier and I would recommend it. Finally, text divider row. You really don't need this one. It's just an easy way I use to add a divider row in my dashboard cards. And with that, let's start a quick walkthrough of how I set up the Tesla integration. Now, the instructions for the integration itself are pretty good. First thing you need to understand is that it requires a token from Tesla in order to log in. There's a number of ways to do this, and the documentation suggests them all, but I chose to use a Chrome browser extension. It's easy to install, and it all runs local, so it's just interacting with Tesla. No third parties are needed. So if you're going to follow me, go ahead and install the Chrome extension so we're ready for the next steps. Then back in Hacks, click Add Repository. Search for Tesla and click Add Custom Repository. Back in the documentation page, click Add Integration. Click the Add to Integration button. This will redirect you and ask you to confirm you want to. And then load your Home Assistant integration page asking you to confirm again, this time the install of the actual Tesla custom integration. Now hold on for one second. With the basic setup of Tesla integration, you have the ability to read only all of your car's stats. This is what I've chosen to do. It's an easy setup and to be honest, for the time being, I don't want to control my car remotely. I might get bored in the future and explore it, but for today, this is all I Need. So if you're interested, in it, it's more complicated than this video, but there is a way to control everything from Home Assistant. Okay, I had to tell you that because you should see a pop-up configuration box asking you if you would like to use the Fleet API. Leave this unchecked, and this means that we are going to be in read only. Now, if you want to control, you're going to have to check this, but be warned, you need to read all the instructions as there's additional steps we're not going to cover today. With that unchecked, click Submit. Next, it's going to ask you for your email address you use to log into your Tesla account, and it's looking for that refresh token. This is where we're going to use that Chrome browser extension to get it. Click on the extension, and it'll load a new tab asking you to log into your Tesla account. Enter your email address and password to log into the Tesla server, and then the Chrome extension is going to display your token. Click on that long string, and it'll copy it for you. Now, back to Home Assistant Setup tab. Paste it into the form, make sure at least vehicles is checked, and hit submit. You should see a standard Home Assistant success box asking you to add your new car to whichever area you want. I chose garage. That's it. You should now have a Tesla custom integration, and you can explore what Home Assistant now knows about your car, and it's actually quite a bit. Now note, without that fleet option, you'll see controls, but they do nothing. Clicking unlock does nothing. The controls, of course, will update if you unlock the doors on your car directly or using the Tesla app. All right, enough of that. 
time to create a Home Assistant custom dashboard card with all of this new info. Now, first thing I usually do is create a new dashboard or at least a new tab to work in. I also usually have a dashboard tab I use to test and build out components of my cards, kind of a playground. I'll use the home tab in this example for our new card, and I'm gonna use the tab I called Builder to test and create parts for it. It's a simple way to use the editor and then just copy and paste into our new card. I'm using the new sections view for my dashboard. This allows us to drag and drop later if we like. So go ahead and click on the plus sign to add a new card. We're gonna create this entire card inside a custom button card. Now I'm gonna cut and paste a bunch here to save some time. So let's select a manual card right at the bottom and that will open up to a YAML editor and I'll paste the default settings. Now you should get all you need from this video, but if you wanna watch a tutorial just on button card, I'll link it somewhere up here and you can take a look at that. I explain it step by step. So this defines the basics of the button card, the size, a black background, and some default styling. From this point, we can use the Builder tab to create and test cards that we want to add to our Tesla card. Let's start by adding an image of my Tesla. Easiest way, use Google, search up an image you like, and then upload it to your server. I have Studio Code installed, so I can just copy and paste it. You could use the built-in file manager if you like as well, but Needless to say, you need to get it onto the Home Assistant server. Now in the Builder tab, click on Add Card and select Picture. The image path will be local slash the name of the image you just uploaded and you should see it appear in the preview. I'm also gonna add a tap action here. We'll use it later. I cheated a little here because I've already added a helper. You can copy what I have on screen or you can just use anything at this point. Really, all we want is the image. Go back into that Tesla card and under custom fields, add a name for your image. I called mine Tesla image one with a full colon. Hit enter, indent, and then type card with a full colon. Now all we wanna do is paste the picture card you just copied in below that name. You should see your image in the preview. Now, here's the magic of button card. Scroll down and under the styles section, under custom fields, copy the name of the card you just added above. And then you can add some positioning information to move that card around on screen. You can adjust the size and have it exactly where you want it to be on the screen. If you want to better visualize the card, I sometimes change the background to green just so I can get a better idea of what it looks like. Now that's the basics. From here on, it's pretty much just copy and paste. Top part of that button card is for the card itself. The bottom part of that is for the positioning information. So there's a corresponding one for each. And although this might look confusing, it's actually really easy to work with because we've got a named section for each card. Card details at the top, matching positioning details are at the bottom. And that's it. Let's try another one. Over to the builder and we'll add a custom mushroom template card. Because at this point it's standalone, we can play with the settings of the card until we get what we want. It doesn't affect our Tesla card. I'm going to add some templating to get the status of the door locks. And once you get the preview that you want, you can go ahead and copy the YAML. Again, I'm cheating a little bit here to save some time. I've already added some styling to the card using card mod. You can learn how to do this on the card mod site or really just look at what I did. It's pretty much all the same and it's gonna be just cut and paste for different parts of the card. Now just like before, back in the Tesla card, create a new name for the card we're about to add, paste in the details, and then create a corresponding section at the bottom in order to position it. Once that's done, I don't even need to go back to the Builder tab anymore. Just start to copy and paste the same card over and over again, changing the entity that we're showing and adding a corresponding positioning element. Let's add the trunk, frunk, windows, and charging door. Don't forget to change the names so they all display the right info. Eagle eyes out there will see that I got windows there twice. Now, copy and paste again, and I'll change up the look of the card a little to add the battery percentage. Make this font a little bit bigger because it's important and move it around to where you like it. Next, let's add estimated range and position it. And finally, odometer. Nice. Let's save that and take a look. Not too bad. Okay, let's keep going. I'm going to add one of those custom divider cards I mentioned before. This one's pretty simple. You can use the builder page or you can just copy and paste what I've added. Same process, add the card part at the top and a positioning section at the bottom. You can see it's all just trial and error to get it looking just right. Okay, let's make our card a little bit bigger. And after that, we're gonna add another image. You can do this the same way we did the first one. Watch how I add it, resize, and just move it around till I like it. Next up, I'm gonna add the tire pressure information. 
We're going to copy and paste, adjust the entities and display, and then we'll position them next to the appropriate tire. Careful here to make sure you have the right ones in the right places. Just repeat it for all four tires. Okay, looking good, but let's add some color to this. Head back over to the builder page and I'm going to add a gauge card. We'll set the entity to battery and we'll define severity. You can make these values whatever you like. Let's go ahead and display the needle as a gauge and click on show code. Copy the YAML and let's head back over to the Tesla card to paste and position it as we've done with all the others. Now I'm going to play with this one and position it right along with the big battery percentage. Now the gauge card has its own text representation of the percentage, but I can't seem to find a way to style it and make it bigger. So we're just going to make the background of the percentage we already have added black and put it on top of the other one. Essentially, we're just gonna hide the one that comes with the gauge card. I think it looks better this way. Okay, should be getting the hang of this. Let's rinse and repeat, adding charging rate, charging power, outdoor temp, indoor temp, and we'll position them all within the card. Also, just because we can, let's copy the cabin temperature and place it inside the car as well, just to give us a visual representation of the internal temp. I know, it's redundant, but why not? Okay, we're almost there. Another trick here is let's copy and paste one of the cards. We can use card mod to reposition the primary text and we can add a border. Essentially, we're just creating a section holder to put the last charge information into. Really, this is just a visual thing. It's not really needed, but I think it looks good and I've used it in other cards. Position that where you like it and then let's add and position the number of kilowatts and the kilometers added during the last charge session. Okay, nice. A couple of final touches. Because this is a polling integration, it's nice to confirm how fresh the data is. So let's add the last updated field from the integration. We can use a card mod and CSS to add a little animation and just move it into the top left corner. Then one more card to display the status of the car, driving, parked, neutral or reverse, and we'll stick that one up in the top right corner. Let's save this and we'll take a look at our growing masterpiece. If you were watching at the beginning, I'm going to add a little trick that will close off the bottom of this card. So all of the information below the brake will hide unless we need to see it. With this, we can manually open and close or we can even use automations to dynamically open and close the card. Head on over to settings, integrations, helpers, and click create helper. Choose number and call this something like Tesla card height. Make the max value 1000, click create, and then just open it up right away and set the slider to about 500. Let's head back over to our Tesla card, click edit, and at the top of the style section, you'll see the width and the height of the main card we created. We're gonna replace the height with the value of the helper we just created. So the card height will become the value of that helper, which means if and when we change the helper value, the card is gonna dynamically adjust its size. For manual control, head back up and find the image cards we added. If you remember, we had a tap action and we just need to adjust the details so that the main Tesla image sets the helper value to 500. On the second image, add the tap action to set the card height back to 260. Essentially, this would close the card. That's it. Save and head back out and test it. Click on the image at the top to open it and the other image to close it. Finally, let's add an automation that will automatically expand the card whenever the Tesla is charging. To do this, create a new automation, make that triggered with any change to the charging status. Then, under the then do section, add two conditional actions. The first is to confirm the Tesla is charging, which will set the helper card height to 500. And the second one is to confirm if the charger is not charging, which would set it back to 260. That's it. Save that, and now anytime you start charging your Tesla, any dashboard with our Tesla card will automatically expand to show us the details. Okay, one final bonus step if you like. I searched Google for an animated battery image, saved it and uploaded it to Home Assistant just like before. Back into our Tesla dashboard card and we can duplicate one of the image cards, change it to be that new battery image we just uploaded. Then let's adjust its size and position it to make it fairly small and place it just to the side of the battery graph. Line it up so the green meets green. Finally, add a little code to change the visibility of this image based on the charging status. So this way, it only appears when the Tesla is actually charging. And that's it. A little animation just for fun. With that card complete, you could easily copy and paste the code into any completed dashboard, just like any other card. Or you can use the same method to create one giant button card with a complete dashboard in it. 
it's up to you. But hopefully you'll see how powerful this method is and how easy it is to get great looking custom dashboard cards. As I've been rebuilding my dashboards, I'm planning to share more examples like this. Again, code is there for all channel members. Ask questions in the comments. And if you want more of these, hit that thumbs up to let me know. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you in the next one.